Let's talk about ordered fields. Now we've talked about fields, so I'm taking a field F and we've actually talked about ordered sets. So we'll say F is a field, in fact, an ordered field if, and here I am assuming that simply the set F is an ordered set. So F is just an ordered set, but moreover that F is an ordered field if these two things, these are the real two conditions. If we have three elements here, x, y, and z in F, take any three elements, well, then x less than y, and remember here the less than sign, this is our relation, this is our ordered relation, and it's one that you're probably very familiar with. x less than y, well, this would imply that x plus z is less than y plus z. We can add to both sides of an inequality. Very convenient, definitely something you'd like to do. And then number two here, second, second part of the definition of an ordered field. If we have two elements, x and y and f, which are both positive, so x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero, well then this implies x times y is greater than zero. In other words, if I have two positive numbers here, or they're not technically numbers if I'm talking about a generic field, but you can think of this as how positive times a positive is, is a positive, right? This makes sense. And you can really just think about the fact that we're going to be talking about real numbers. If I multiply two positive real numbers, the result should be positive as well. Let's let F be an ordered field and let's take any four elements, X, Y, Z, and W in F. Then we're gonna get these following results. And these are things that you would really expect, but we're gonna state them just to be perfectly clear. Number one here, if X is positive, well, then minus x is negative. Or if x is greater than zero, then minus x is less than zero. And we'll say, and vice versa here. You know, if x is negative, then negative x is positive. Just like you would expect. Number two, x positive and y less than z, well then x times y is less than x times z, right? So x is positive and y is less than z. Well then multiplying by something less than z should be less than multiplying by something which is z. Number three, very similar x negative and y less than z, this would imply that x, y is greater than x is a very, very similar result. Number four, x not equal to zero, well that would imply x squared is positive. Right? Square, square a real number, it should be positive here. This is the way you should be thinking, but this is true of an arbitrary ordered field. Number five, x positive, but less than y? Well, this implies that one over y is positive, but also less than one over x. Think about how you would, you know, change things around with this inequality. Think about dividing both sides by x and y. Not really talking about what that means, but this is a true fact. Number six, if x is positive, but less than y, well then there's squares have this relation. X squared is less than Y squared, exactly what you would expect. Think one is less than two. Well, one squared is less than two squared, of course. And then finally, we have a bit of transitivity here. Notice the less than or equal to sign. X less than or equal to Y, and Z less than or equal to W. Well, this would imply that X plus Z is less than or equal to y plus w. In a sense, I can sort of add these inequalities together. So we have all of these results. These are all true facts. If we have an ordered field, I'm not going to prove all of them, but maybe we'll just prove number one here for you. So for number one, we assume 
we assume that x, x is in our ordered field and that x is positive. Okay, so this is my only assumption along with the definition we had of an ordered field. Now, if you remember, what was the first definition of the ordered field that for any x, y, and z in f, with x being less than y, this implies that x plus z is less than y plus z. This was our first condition of being an ordered field. Now we also have the fact that, well, we're working with a field. And what were some of the things that happened with the field? Well, we knew that there was a zero in the field. So zero is in the field. And we also have a minus x in the field. These were two conditions of the field, field axioms. If you want to look back at a previous video on fields, you can check those out. But let's use all of these facts. Let's use this that we have, we have this, and we have this. So we assumed x is greater than zero. Well, let's just say that x plus or minus x has to be greater than zero plus minus x. Right? These are all field elements. And then we'll just use the properties of the field. Remember x plus minus x, one of the field axioms, this is in fact zero on the left. And any element in the field, here minus x plus zero, is simply that element. So this left-hand side, I'm using properties of inverses, essentially. And on the right-hand side, I'm using properties of the additive identity. And hey, there we go. This is exactly what we wanted to prove. Draw a little square there, if you like. Some people like that. And, and that's exactly what we want, that if x is greater than zero, it implies that zero is greater than minus x.